All right, we're ready to do the last of our three videos. Uh, in our first two videos, we talked to Don Youngpeter, Program Chair, Computer Programming Database Management. Talked a little bit about that program, uh, a little bit about internet programming, and about databases. In the second set of videos, you met Steve Yelton, talked about software engineering technology, why his program has more math, more science requirements. Uh, we looked at what the project classes uh, attempt to accomplish, and also the concept of a common first term, why that was created. Hopefully all that's uh, uh, understood now. In our last interview, we're going to talk to Bob Neilds, Program Chair of Business Information Systems, learn a lot about that program and why it's unique from the other two programs. And secondly, we're going to talk about high-level languages. We offer a whole spectrum of them. We're going to find out what differentiates one from another. And finally, why we offer that many courses. So we'll start with the first question. Bob, business information systems, uh, why is it unique from computer programming and database management and software engineering technology? Uh, business information systems is what it just states right there. It's, it's all about business and the information systems within business. I would say 100% or just about 100% of all businesses globally use some type of technology within their business to support what they do. Our goal in business information systems is to uh, help students understand what goes on in a business, uh, how the technology plays in that business, and how then to take gives you the skills to be able to get employed by businesses, excuse me, get employed by businesses uh, to be able to uh, you know, work in them and apply technology and help them basically increase their bottom line through technology. That's our goal. We do this a couple different ways. We do this basically trying to teach you a little bit about business, uh, at least from a high level point of view, uh, what it is businesses do, uh, the makeup of any business, uh, and then we teach you uh, about um, some of the flow of money uh, within a business based on through our accounting. And then finally what we do is we take our technologies and we teach you, uh, what do you want to say, we, yeah, we teach you uh, 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 in detail the technologies used within a business. And we'll make you a programmer on and hopefully lend itself to that you're moving on to, as to, to an analyst uh, within a business. So our goal there is, is twofold. Work in, if, if your goal is to work in a business uh, and your goal is to do technology within a business, we feel that BIS is a program that will help prepare you to do so. In the second week of the course, we looked at the requirements for graduation for all three programs. The general studies requirements, the support course requirements, and the technical core area requirements. Uh, in our last couple of videos, we talked about internet programming and database. In this video, we're going to look at high-level languages, uh, which ones we offer, and uh, why we offer so many. And Bob's going to tell us uh, about that. So let's start with what's a high-level language? Well, to understand a high-level programming language, I think we got to go back to the beginning of what a low-level programming language is and how we got to today with the languages that we're dealing with. Uh, primarily, we talk about you know some of the first programming languages back in the 50s and the 60s. It was machine code, and that's considered first-generation language. It is the code, the hexadecimal, the binary ones and zeros that people that the computer only understands. People used to write in that. Well, it became a nuisance, very hard to do. So we went to the second-generation language, which became assembler. Assembler, for the most part, started putting a little bit more English to it, very little, but more English to it, so people could understand that piece. Third generation languages started coming about, which really made it more user friendly for the developer to develop more quickly and for the actual code to be more maintained. This is what we know today. Third generation languages are things such as C, C, Java, RPG, COBOL, and so on, VB as we know it today, and BASIC. So those are third generation languages. The industry tried to get a little bit cute, I guess I would say, when you look at fourth and fifth generation languages. These are more things where the fourth generation languages start dealing with uh, tools that actually would generate the code. Today we might look at report uh, tools, reporting tools, such as Crystal Reports and so mm -hmm. on to do that. Those are fourth generation languages. Uh, programmers still need to be involved in fourth generation languages. However, uh, the, the tools themselves literally generate a lot of the code. Fifth generation languages, in a sense, Programmers don't need to be involved. It, they take rules in and generate the code that way. 
You know, there was a lot of hype of that back in the 90s. It's kind of slowed down, but there's still some goals that later on those might come back. So with that, when we talk about high-level uh, high languages that we're talking about right now, we're really talking about third-generation languages that we teach here at Cincinnati State, which are the RPGs, the Javas, the C++, the VBs, and so on. In the common first term, I notice we have a course, uh, Visual Basic 1, that all the students take. What's covered in that class? Visual Basic is our introductory course. Uh, there's no prereq to it, and there's no assumption that you know anything about programming. In some cases, I like the fact when people walk in with no uh, idea about programming. Yeah. Uh, what we try to do is basically teach students what businesses are looking for. That's what we're trying to mold you uh, into doing, not just businesses, but all industry in, in a sense. So we start off in Visual Basic, not just talking about Visual Basic in a sense, VB1. We start talking about you know, the whole idea of design how to think like a programmer, how to solve a problem. And then we get into the introduction into VB to the point of trying to, you know, get your hands dirty in this language. It's still a very, um, you know, rudimentary type of, 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 of course. It, it's, uh, we don't go very fast. Uh, we try to get the whole idea when you leave there that you understand how to think like a programmer. And that is a goal that not everybody can do. And it takes uh, some practice, but it also takes ability to be able to do this. Uh, we get a lot of students in there saying, I'm reading the book and reading the book and reading the book, but I can't find the answer. The answer is in your own logic, and that's what we try to pull out of you in this class by utilizing VB and other mechanisms as we go through it.